Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> uh, this is the second and hopefully concluding part of our uh, little bolt gun build. Um, so, if you watched the last video, uh, basically what I'm doing is I've taken uh, an old uh, Airsoft AK. It says AK-47, but I think this is an AK-74U. Anyway, that's irrelevant. And we're turning it into a bolt gun or a bolt pistol. So let me just catch you up on where we are. I've done a little bit off camera, uh, nothing too drastic. Uh, I made a couple of plates for the side of this. There's, it's all um, the same process as, as the rest of it, just very basic metal folding and whatnot. So that's the top done. I've also 3D printed a nose cap that looks fairly bolt gun-ish. And I've also made some sights uh, that will go on. Um, I've cut down the barrel to the roughly the right length. Um, so we're actually chomping along with this quite nicely. Now there's a couple of things left to do. Uh, so basically here are the here's the, the, the two main issues. The first one is this. Uh, this is the clevis pin that I said about holding the back um, of the weapon in place. Oh. And honestly, I, I don't like that. I don't like that. It doesn't. The, the main problem is that it can do that. So I think what I'm going to do instead, and I wish I'd have thought of it to start with because it made life a lot easier. I'm going to drill a hole. For, uh, I'm going to put a nutser in the receiver and then put a thumb screw to hold this in place so that's one thing we've got to do uh, and then the other thing is this um, I wanted to kind of I want to I need to block this hole in uh, now obviously the easiest way to do that would be just to extend this up to the end but I kind of wanted that ejection port um, the trouble is, everything when I put it all together, everything gets in the way. So we need to figure that out as well. But what we're going to do to start with is we are going to um, take the top back off. We're going to take the gearbox uh, and the motor out so that I can drill a hole in the back. Uh, I also need to refit the sling because my son wants a sling on it. So we'll do that first. So let's get on with it. The funny thing is with this, the only thing holding the gearbox and everything in the gun is the screw that holds the pistol grip on and the screw that holds the safety catch in place. <laughs> That's it. Everything else, there's basically nothing else holding it in, which is kind of comical. So, anyway. All right, I've got a box here with all the bits in, so I don't lose anything. Okay, let's get that out. Got to be careful here because there's a a mechanism here. This is the safety catch um, mechanism. So I don't know if you've ever seen one before, but that basically is what controls uh, how it works, how it fires, and everything. So, and that all just falls off if you're not careful. So we'll just put that to one side. Uh, now, the nice thing is actually just there's a big gap at the bottom here, which is quite useful, which is also covered in fluff and dust. Um, so, hopefully, I should have enough room to put the nutsert in. So, I'm just going to take this safety catch off for a minute because I don't want those bits falling on the floor. Um, but there is actually a huge gap in there, so I should be able to put a nutser in there, no problem. So, right, let's do that. Oh. Right, I'll drill that out and then we'll uh, have a look and see what it looks like. Right, so I've just drilled a... Uh, Focus a little, a five millimeter hole in the back there. It's 
blooming drill bit wandered slightly it's not right in the center but it doesn't matter um, so I'm gonna put this riv nut in it I don't know if you've ever seen one of these before um, basically what this is if the camera would focus on it focus there we go um, it's basically a, a little metal tube with a th thread inside it and one end of it is designed to crush and the idea is you drill a hole in a piece of thin sheet metal uh, you put this through it and you use a tool a bit like a rivet gun uh, to crush the top of that and it basically gives you a nut insert hence the term nut insert. Um, they're designed to go on very thin metal uh, I think these are designed for no more than one millimeter now the, the plastic on this is a lot thicker than that so I'm just going to put this in I'm going to aerodite it in or, or use some kind of epoxy but that will basically go in like that Right, there we go. Uh, so that goes in like that. I'll aerodite it in, and that, that gives us a nice metal uh, insert. I mean, I could have probably tapped a hole in the plastic, but it's plastic, and it would probably end up to pulling the threads out. So this will be a lot stronger. So I'll glue that in, and then we'll um, go from there. Okay, so I've just drilled and tapped uh, a couple of holes in the top of the top cover for the, uh, the rear sight to go on. So we'll just pop a couple of these these are M3 by 10 mil machine screws. So we'll just drop those in there. I say these sights really are more just for appearance than anything else. I don't know how effective they'll actually be, but yeah, they might work. They're better than nothing. I mean, to be honest, with most airsoft guns, you don't really need sights anyway. A lot of people don't bother with the sights. Right, so that's that attached. Um, the reason I've bolted these on, and also the reason why I've made the top cut, the, the the front sight separate as well, is basically that this is the kind of thing that's going to get knocked off and broken. Um, so by making it on, put it on like that, it means that if it gets broken, I can just unscrew it and put a new one on. So uh, let's screw this one on too. So for these, I'm going to use these, um, they're just little self-tapping screws. So I'll just pop those in. They're not, I'd rather, if I could, I'd rather have screws that match the back. But the trouble is with this is I can't put anything, I can't put a thread on it. So I think these are going to have to do, I just hope they're not too long. Right, there we go, that'll do for that. Okay, now we've just got to wait for the uh, glue on the back of the other thing to dry. Drill a hole in the back of the receiver, or the top cover. Right, so I have uh, glued that in there like that. That's cured quite nicely, so that's nice and set. Uh, I have drilled uh, a hole, uh, a suitable hole in the back of the uh, cover. Uh, I'm waiting for some thumb screws to turn up, um, but I might just put a, a bolt in it to, for now. Uh, so what we want to do now is start putting this back together. So let's do that. Right, and... Uh, there we have it. So the only thing I've got to do now, uh, let's just see what it looks like with the magazine on. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So all I've got to do now is find a way to cover up this hole. Um, and the problem that we've got is there's a bit of plastic sticking out there. I don't actually know why it's there. Um, I might just take it off and then cover that up. But aside from that, there is one airsoft 
bolt pistol. <laughs> I'm going to fill in that hole and then put some paint on it and we'll see what it looks like. Right, well I just went in the house to get something and uh, the thumb screws are turned up. So I've just put one in there. I'm slightly dubious about this because they're, the thumb screws are aluminium, not steel. So, um, But I've put the battery in and I just want to see if it actually works. I know you're not supposed to dry fire it, but let's just give it a quick go. So that's full auto. So this is the first test firing. <laughs> Semi-auto. Right, well, that works. <laughs> right, okay, so now I have to um, take it apart, fill in this gap here. Well, I need to measure this gap, then take it apart, fill in that gap, and then paint it. So let's do that. Right, so I've started painting all this now and uh, while the other bits are drying I've got the uh, muzzle cap here and I've got these two uh, Imperial uh, Eagles, the uh, Aquila, Aquila, whichever one it is, um, and I'm going to put one on each side uh, just to kind of jazz it up a little bit. So to put them on I'm going to use some five minute epoxy and I'm just going to put it on the back and then stick it on. The reason I'm using this is because I want to spread it out over the back of the whole thing because these are 3D printed with resin and the trouble is they can be a bit um, a bit delicate, a bit fragile. They tend to uh, they tend to break quite easily if you so much as look at them funny. So what I want to do is make sure I've got glue over the whole thing so that if any of it catches it hopefully won't snap it off. I mean it might do but if it does then that's just battle scars isn't it? So. Now we've got to do the fun bit. So, oh, I'm going to measure down 20 millimeters from the top, and put that there like that. Oh, trying to get glue all over everything. Let's just make sure that's. There we go. I'll stick the other one on and I've got another bit to put on it but I'll leave that as a little surprise right for the end. <laughs> Right, uh, so I've finished painting everything. Um, basically what I've done is the, uh, the lower receiver, because that's plastic, I painted that silver first and then put black over the top. And the idea being so that if the black gets chipped, it should show the silver. Uh, the upper, which of course is aluminium, I've just sprayed black, because if that gets chipped, it doesn't matter. I left the, um, the ejection port cover or the, the side of the bolt car however you want to look at it I've left that as just raw metal so that it is a nice uh, contrast <laughs> struggling with words a bit at the moment um, the end cap uh, has the uh, Imperial Eagles on it and I also added one extra little bit which is that if the camera will actually focus on it there we go that is the uh, the symbol of the Imperial Inquisition and uh, I put that on the front there because there was quite a big gap here and it was a bit monolithic and I had this already printed and I thought actually that would look pretty cool it's kind of like 
the last thing that the, the heretic sees is the symbol of the Inquisition so they know that they are receiving the uh, the righteous judgment of the emperor of mankind that kind of thing um but anyway so there we go that's all put together they've all had a coat of um uh, a matte lacquer to seal everything up and so now i think we can put everything together and i think that'll be us done so i'll put this back together and then we'll uh, see what it looks like and we'll wrap this up and here is the finished article. Uh, I am very pleased with how this came out. Um, it was a bit of a quick and dirty project, uh, just to uh, satisfy a whim, as it were. But uh, yeah, it's come out really well. So I think it looks suitably warhammery. Uh, I like the uh, the little splash of colour with the uh, the imperial eagles and, of course, the uh, inquisitor's symbol on the front. Uh, my son's very pleased with it. He's looking forward to using it in his next match, which is this Sunday, I believe. Um, so, yeah, on the whole, not a bad little couple of days work. So hopefully this is something that some of you are interested in. As I say, there, there are some other projects that we're going to be working on uh, that you might or might not be interested in seeing. Uh, but in any case, I uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.